the world. I don't know why I did it like that, but maybe because I'm so excited to have Georgia Jones in the studio. Woo! Hi, Georgia. Hi, Holly. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I would like you to know that I've had so many people request to have you on the podcast like for a long time, so I'm very glad you're here. Hell yeah. Yeah, people really want to talk to you. You need to put your mouth, My mouth in it on that thing. <laughs> Something I knew how to do. <laughs> Watch. Um, yeah, and actually, I do a fan question portion um, exclusively for members of my Patreon, and I always ask people, I'm like, "Hey, send me your fan questions." And sometimes people like don't send me any, and I got more fan questions for you than any other guest I've ever had. Hell yeah. I was like, "Fuck, dude, this is a lot of questions." Like, fuck yeah. Do you do you really want to know all this about her? <laughs> No, I'm just <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> um, so we might do some of them during this podcast, but most of them we will do um, in my second little additional exclusive podcast uh, video on my patreon.com slash Unfiltered. Because you know this shit ain't free, people. The yeah. parking especially here is very expensive. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so how are you? I'm good. I'm really good. Tell me, how long have you been in the industry now? Because I feel like we've known each other for a while. A long ass time. I don't, it's <laughs> 12 years this month. 12 years this month. Mm-hmm. I was 20 years in September. Hell yeah. I know, Hell yeah, right? Dude. And the time goes by so quick. So fast. Do you remember when you were a kid and your parents were, and you like couldn't wait to grow up and your parents would be like, don't say that. Like once you get older, time flies by and you'd be like, shut up. You're just saying that. And it's so true. Yeah, it like, is. how is it already like almost November? Dude, this year went by so quick. It's ridiculous. So quick. The past, actually, the past like five years have gone by. Really I, quick, I, know, so I, I know. You know, it's going to keep happening like, <laughs> like that. It's, I, I, it's going to be the holidays next year before I know it. I'm going to blink, know. and it's going to be. Are you distant. a holiday girl? Are you excited about the holidays coming up? Um, yes and no. I think when I was younger, I didn't really care for it much. But now that I'm older, I have like my own traditions and stuff. Interesting. I'm not really much of like a decorator. Like I don't really decorate my home or put up a tree or anything like that. But I do like um, the the feel of the holidays is very romantic to me. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. I love, um, I'm not, Christmas is like my big thing. Like Halloween, I'm like, meh, I don't really decorate my house. Though we're doing pumpkin carving tonight. Full disclosure, people, I tend to like record my podcasts weeks, sometimes weeks before they come out. So by the time this comes out, it will be after Halloween. So people will be like, what is she talking about? But just so you know, today is actually October 29th in real time. Oh, yeah. In our time. Um, so yeah, we are doing pumpkin carving tonight. But um, otherwise, yeah, Christmas is my jam. I like Christmas. I get a tree. I, like I get. I have a whole set of um, ornaments. I have like a set of like blue and white, and then like gold and white, and I like alternate them every year. I have a bunch that my mother saved for me from like when I was a little girl, like ones oh, that I made in school so and cool. stuff. So they're all like you know, like they, they say my name on them, and like when I was like seven. That's awesome. Six. That's awesome. I we yeah. I don't have any. I know I made those when I was a kid, but I don't have any more of them. Um, I think they broke. And My mom like saves that. everything. That's great. total pack rat. She saves it all, and then and when we're older, she you know sends it to us. Well, now so. you're like grateful that she did. Uh, very much so. Yeah. When I was younger, I was like, throw that away. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. Just junk. But now I'm like, oh, it's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, little little bears and stuff. And, oh, oh my gosh. It was so little. It's just a little thing. Where did did you grow up here? Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah. What was that like? Hell. <laughs> it was so fucking boring. Really? And repressed and depraved. And really? Just, just nothing. Just nothing there. So when did you come out to California? 18. Okay. And is that when you start working in the adult industry? Yeah, I came out here to do porn. Okay. So yeah. tell us how that whole thing started. Um, well, let's see. When I the minute I turned 18, my 18th birthday, I went and got an application at a strip club. Like, I knew that was going – and pff, I knew for years at that point. I was, like, just waiting, Biden time. Were you, like, a sexually charged youngster? Very much so. I'm mm. just out of control. <laughs> Completely out of control. Yeah. Um. So when that happened, that actually calmed me down quite a bit. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Because you were able to, like, freely exercise your, you mm-hmm. know, sexual tendencies. You weren't. It's when you repress people and you don't allow them to be who they are, I think that's when the problem arises. That's absolutely the problem. It, yeah. I was 100% repressed. So yeah. I finally found an outlet for me to, um, you know, release and express my sexuality and mm-hmm. also make money while doing it and support right. myself. I was fucking in love. I was like, this is my jam. I didn't ever even go out anywhere. I was 
literally working at the club every single night because I loved it so much. Wow. I was thinking about this the other day. There was, I remember at one point in the first couple of months I was working there, my manager actually told me that he couldn't allow me to come in and work that night because I had worked every single night for two weeks straight. And he said legally he couldn't allow me in the club. I was like, what the hell? This is bullshit. I want to come in and work. Legally. That's yeah. interesting. Because I'd been there for 14 days straight or something. I had to take some time off. <laughs> so I just went to their competitor down the street. <laughs> Like, do you it. like do you like dancing? <laughs> uh, I I love dancing. Actually, I I miss it sometimes. So I like, I mean, because you know I feature dance now, but I like I wish I could go under the radar sometimes. Mm. Just go to the club, and be a regular dancer. I kind of yeah. miss that like hustling lifestyle sometimes. It's, really, it's a high. It's definitely a high. That's interesting because almost every girl I talked to who was a stripper hated the hustle. Like that was a part that they didn't like. I think it takes a certain person to really enjoy that. Mm. Like to be able to walk up to someone and hustle them out of their money. Like it's it's totally a it's a fun thing. It's yeah, it's like a mind fuck on a whole other level. Like you're not just like mentally fucking this person. Yeah. Also taking their money and they know you're doing it while it's happening. That's the whole reason they came there in the first place. You know. But let's not forget, society says that you're the one who's exploited. Oh yeah. (laughs) Don't forget. Don't forget, like, you're the one being taken advantage of. Poor me. Poor you. Poor me. Yeah. I'm serious. Like, I, I say it all the time and people don't believe me. I'm such an entitled sex worker. I can't, <laughs> I literally cannot do anything domestic for myself. I can't cook. I can't clean. I've been a sex worker my entire adult life and I've just had it all handed to me. And yet, right. meanwhile, poor me, I need saving. Yeah. Lots of saving. Like, yeah. it's ridiculous. So um, it's kind of interesting because. We were talking a little bit before um, the podcast started about how things in the industry have changed so much. Um, and that was kind of actually one of the fan questions. Hold on, let me, let me pull it up because I want to give him credit for asking this question. Um, uh, Don Juan won. Oh, yes. I Because there's is. multiple ones. Don if, you probably know who all these people probably, are. Probably, yeah. <laughs> um, he wants to know, after so many years in this business, how do you stay sane with all the changes going on? And we were just saying, like, it has changed so much over the last 12 years. So, so you've much. seen the change. It's completely so tell me, different. like, from your experience, like, what it was like and what it's like now. Um, when I first started, you know, honestly, it's changed so much, but there's good and bad things about mm-hmm. it, I guess. When I first started, you literally had to find people to hire you. You had to be hired by people, you know what I mean? Um, their social media was, like, really just starting out. I mean, we had, like, what, MySpace back then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, that dates me. <laughs> it's like, MySpace! But we didn't really have a good platform for, you know, advertising for ourselves in order to be able to produce our own content. So you really had to work with producers and directors yeah. to get on set yep. in order to make money. Mm-hmm. But there was also a lot more money going into, mm-hmm. there's a lot more budget and different mm-hmm. things like that. So yep. there was more work that way. Right. So now it's, like, you kind of... When you do it yourself, you have to work harder, but the payoff is better, I feel. Right. Being able to work for myself is great. I mean, yeah. it's a lot. Don't get me wrong. It is a lot of work. It's yeah. a lot more work than just showing up and it's sitting bad. in a makeup chair for an hour and then getting up and sitting in front of a camera and yeah. we'll wash, rinse, repeat. Yeah. It's way different. It's way more work, but I enjoy it. So mm-hmm. I, I like doing that. I'm extremely independent. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've, I get a lot of self-worth out of it too, being mm-hmm. able to do something for myself like that. Really? Yeah. So yeah. you think it like kind of helps you with your self esteem? Oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. When I can wake up in the morning, check all my stats, and just like keep pushing, keep mm-hmm. myself motivated, feels great. Where? What platforms do you generally like really hustle on? Oh, uh, Twitter is where I'm the most active. Okay. On, on my Twitter, and uh, that's at XO Georgia Jones. Yeah, at XO Georgia Jones, and that's my same for my Instagram too. But Instagram's. <laughs> stupid well so, they don't really like sex workers at all yeah they don't there's yeah, don't get me started yeah they will I don't delete like facebook is what it is so yeah <laughs> facebook is the same i have my facebook account deleted um i'm yeah i'm super it's funny because i was talking to somebody who works in mainstream they're like well why don't you like go on like you know instagram and then like promote your site and then do the, like the swipe up i'm like if i do the swipe up and directly link to a porn site i'm like they will delete me yeah for sure so i have to be yeah, so heartbeat. fucking careful i mean they like literally i had a post that was literally just a sheet of a blank white sheet of paper mm-hmm. and on it it said fuck you cunt mm-hmm. just like written in blue ink yeah. that was it and i posted a picture of it and said all oh, someone wrote me a love letter is what i put in the caption yeah. and they deleted it saying it was hate speech i'm like really 
like I put it on my own. Like, put, yeah, whatever. Wow, I know. I've heard like Pete girls say that like they get their pictures of their dogs deleted mm-hmm. and like, coffee just, mugs, pictures of coffee mugs. I'm not even kidding. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. stupid shit. Yeah. Haters. Do you do you think that it's people that are just constantly like reporting you? Like, do you have mm-hmm. trolls that really attack you mm-hmm. online constantly? And what kind of stuff do they say to you? Stupid shit. <laughs> Stupid shit. They're just retarded. Like, okay, because I'm constantly bitching about don't watch stolen porn because mm-hmm. it's not free, mm-hmm. and people will be like, "That's why we watch porn." Like, actually, someone just said that to me earlier. We, that's why we watch porn is because it's free. And I was like, "Eating dirt is also free. <laughs> why don't you try that, honey? It's good for you." <laughs> Just stupid shit. I think people really don't re- realize the fact that, like, I, I think it's so easy to get away with just watching free porn. Because, first of all, I think a lot of people don't want to join a website because they don't want their credit card connected to an adult site. They're afraid of some kind of exposure. Um, and also, too, that they don't see, like, the an inherent value in porn, and so they don't believe that they should invest in it. Mm-hmm. But people use it all the time. And there's still so much shame around masturbation and around watching porn. And, um, yeah, it's just like, it's just like the perfect recipe for people like wanting to consume a product, but not paying for it. And then thinking that like somehow we're just going to make money in other ways or. They absolutely think that. Yeah. And I also, they, a big portion of them also still see us as like subhuman. So it's like, even if they see a lot of people are ignorant to it, they don't understand that that content is being stolen from us. Mm -hmm. But then there's also a giant group of people that understand that and they just Mm. simply don't give a shit because they think that we're all whores and so it doesn't matter. Right, right, right. That we should be stolen from. Right, Because we're dirty, I guess. Right. Or lame. I don't know. I'm like, I don't know. What's the... But the (laughs) irony is, of course, that they are using your product to fulfill their own, like, pleasure-seeking desires. They'll use the shit out of it and then turn around and, like, mock us and degrade us all the same while. Yeah. That's okay. Mm, I'm just still laughing. (laughs) <laughs> what about um, – now, you do have a lot of, like, hardcore fans, though, like, people that really love yes, you. Yes, yes. Why do you think that you have such a strong following? Do you think it's because you interact with them or do you think it's – I mean, you've always had, like, a, a very unique uh, – I don't know. Like, sometimes it's hard for me to know um, – why some girls have such a strong fan base and other girls don't. Not saying that you don't deserve it because, of course, you do. You're beautiful and you're a great performer and all of these things. But sometimes other beautiful, great performers will also, like, but they won't get, like, a, that kind of cultish. You almost have, like, a cultish fan following yeah. that other girls won't have. Do you think you know – do you know why you have that? I mean, I'm, I can't be 100% sure, but honestly, I think it's – the way a girl carries herself in the business, mm. if it really – like you can really tell it translates onto film if a girl really enjoys her job or not. Yes, And I agree. for me, that it makes a huge difference if a girl really enjoys her job or not because that's going to make my job that much easier. Right, When a right. girl shows up and she just hates life, you know what I mean? That's just – it sucks. It yeah. really does. Yeah. So I think that translates very well. And so people can see that. So it makes them feel better watching that stuff, you like know? Like they don't feel like they're exploiting that person. Yeah. Like that person is – it's easier to enjoy porn if you feel like the people that you're watching are really enjoying it. I also have noticed too I have a lot of girls fans, mm-hmm. like – and young girl fans mm-hmm. in particular. And I think that has to do with um, – they can relate with me the way mm-hmm. that like I look. They relate with that and Mm. the fact that I'm um, an empowered woman that Mm. just embraces her sexuality and quite frankly doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. And so they see something in that that they want to be then, you know. And you're also all natural. You haven't fallen into that trap of like needing to get work done. No. It's it's too expensive. (laughs) <laughs> Fuck that. I don't, uh, I'm way too greedy. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'd l- I would like to also think too that you just embrace who you are and too, you're yeah. happy with your body the way it is. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think you look great. I I personally like. I don't know. I think girls should do whatever they want to make them happy. And don't get me wrong. It's not like I haven't like had Botox or whatever. I am not perfect. But um, I don't know. Sometimes I just see these girls go to these cartoonish proportions with their body. And I'm just like, what? That just looks weird. I agree. I th- but, you know, I'm with you on the let anyone do what they want. If they want to look like that, then it's perfectly fine with me. Right. You know what I mean? If, right. As long as they're happy. As long as they're not, like, doing it and it's just making themselves feel worse. Right? Yeah. The the issue is when I see girls constantly, like, getting more and more stuff done and just becoming, like... It's crazy, too, because it's always the, like, most beautiful, stunning women. Oh, no. And then they go and just change everything. And it's like, but you were perfection. You were like, why, perfection Why before. did you... 
Why did you mess do that? with perfection? It doesn't yeah. make sense to my brain. But yeah, yeah. But people, body, everybody so. sees themselves differently. Totally, it's it's hard to. I always see like really gorgeous girls end up being the most insecure people I know, and I'm like, yeah. how does that happen? But I wonder if it's because like their whole life they had so much um, importance placed upon their looks, absolutely, and that is something yep. that is a very transient quality, and is con- you know there's always going to be somebody younger and prettier than you, and and I mean it's great to be beautiful, but. It's like it's not uh, something that you can cultivate. They've had so much worth put on their physical appearance. Right. That's you know, and people ignore like maybe their their mental abilities or their exactly. skill sets in other areas, and exactly. it's it's hard to build like a strong feeling of self esteem just based on your looks. Yeah. Because yeah, people value that, but they value that in a shallow sense. And if you've spent like half of your life worried about only this and not yes. what's in here, then right. it's like, what do you do? Try to upkeep this one or just start all over again with something here? Does right. It feels like to them, I think. I think. I really yeah. don't know. <laughs> and, and, and I can't imagine how difficult it must be to be aging when yeah. you've spent your whole life like being of, concerned. All of your eggs in that basket. Yeah. <laughs> I remember somebody, I can't remember where I read it. It was some article I read somewhere, but... Um, someone said that they made a conscious effort to tell like young girls, I'm talking like children, not saying like, you're such a beautiful girl, but more along the lines of you're such a smart girl or you're such a talented totally, girl. Yeah. Like, you know, because we're so, we, we so easily jump to like, oh, what a beautiful little girl, which of course is probably true and great, but, um, there's something to be said for putting emphasis on other aspects, other skill Absolutely. sets, that kind of thing. Absolutely. I remember when I was young. Um, I wanted to be a model, right? I had this bizarre, bizarre thought when I was super young. I'm talking like, I don't know, six, seven, that I was going to – I think it was probably just being surround. my mom was a photographer, being surrounded by models, like always looking at like fashion magazines and that kind of stuff. Um, always being obsessed with the idea that I was going to grow up to be the most beautiful woman in the world. Like I seriously thought that it was very, very strange. <laughs> like I would like, I didn't think I was the most beautiful girl in the world at that moment in time, but I thought like when I'm older, that's what's going to happen. And I would look at like girls in fashion magazines. I'm like, Kate Moss, I'm going to be more beautiful than that. I don't know <laughs> why. And it, yeah. Right. And it was like this obsession of mine, which is like so stupid now that I think about it. And like, look, I mean, obviously that didn't happen. Um, but like, I don't know why I was so obsessed with it. And so I wanted to be a model when I was younger and my mom, who was a model, you know, and then became a photographer. She said to me, she was like, I would not choose that life for you. I think she also saw that I probably didn't have what it took, but she didn't want to be like, you don't have what it takes. She was more like, you should try being behind the camera. You have a lot more power. Exactly. She's like the self-esteem, like the way people cut you down, the way people talk to you, the way people just see you, you know, mm-hmm. see you as an object, like, why don't you, you should try being behind the camera because you have, there's so much more power in that. There's so much more control in that. And that was like the best piece of advice she ever gave me. And I think what it was is that when I was young, I was obsessed with, with beauty and with the female image. But when I was young, I didn't know how to translate that into something else except for like me being that Totally. beautiful image. But then once I found my place behind the camera, I was like, oh, this is where I was meant to be helping other women create and cultivate this beautiful totally. image. And it felt so much more comfortable for me. It made more sense for me. Um, and yeah, there was a lot more power and control in that. I started, I took my first photography class when I was 12. So. Yeah, so I became like obsessed. She's like, here, start now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's when I oh, became I that. obsessed when, with photography. Photo- I feel very fortunate that I knew from a young age that what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Yeah, like, I was awesome. sure of it. That's awesome. Um, so that's when I really like locked into that and I was like, this is what I want to do. But I've always loved photos and taking photos. Like, you know, I used to steal my mom's camera when I was, my mom's Polaroid camera when she was, when I was a little girl and like to shoot the dog, the chair, the floor, like waste all this film. She'd be like, fuck. She'd have to like hide it from me. So even then I loved that. And those developed. Yeah. I love, I know exactly. (laughs) Um, I loved capturing images, but I, I wasn't able to like actually focus in on becoming a photographer until I took that first class. And then I was like, okay, this is what I was meant to do for the rest of my life. So I still remember the first time I shot with your mother, I was like, I felt like I had a celebrity photographer shooting me. I was so <laughs> excited. 
excited, Holly. Oh my God, I was so excited. <laughs> it is so cool that you actually got to shoot with my mom because, you know, she's yeah, retired a long she time ago. Right so after a long, that. A, peop, a lot of people haven't never shot with yeah. her. They've never experienced. Yeah, no, I, I think she retired that year, if I remember probably, correctly. Probably, probably. Yeah. It was like um, when she still had the studio over there, right off of uh, what was it? Uh, no, no, no. It was off of uh, Sepulveda. That's right. Yeah, that's by right. the four hundred five. Yes, yes, yes. That's crazy. Yeah, Way that back was, when. What did we? What what was the set? Do you remember? Florals with blue. I don't remember. Just was like it just blue. a solo? Yeah, but then you and I shot at that studio too when we did that fashion campaign, like Alienware or some shit. Do you remember that? <gasps> oh yeah, for with Caden Cross. Yes, and Alan. Yes. Uh, oh, oh yes, the guy, the male porn star. I shot him for Playgirl. I Fuck, I can't remember his last name either. Stafford. Yes, Alan Stafford. Thank you. <laughs> I knew it was in there. Yeah, that was crazy, right? That, yes. was, that was the first time you shot me, actually. Was, was it? For a, for a fashion campaign, yeah. Oh, wow. That was crazy. I actually came across those pictures a couple years ago and was like, what the fuck? I still have them. Holy I totally still have back. them. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, – that guy had no idea what he was doing. The, that clothing was not so great. Yeah, it was very But odd. he was willing to – I think I might even still have like one of those shirts really? with like, the little alien head on oh it. I swear God. to you. I don't throw anything away. That would be amazing. <laughs> you like your mother? Oh, yes. It, I wonder where I got it. <laughs> thanks, mo- thanks, mom. <laughs> <laughs> I completely yeah I remember we were like because he spent all this money on shooting and then I remember so asking him like what his business plan was in order to like get the you know campaign out there and he like didn't know he's, he's like, like I'm gonna oh, have you shoot it yeah and then and I'll then- figure it out and I was like okay <laughs> yeah, remember- all right you then so this will like- be a one-time thing <laughs> <laughs> I just remember the look on your face you're like Okay, just put this on. I don't know. Yeah, and I was like, sorry. I mean, <laughs> hey, you're wearing clothes, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're getting a paycheck. Yeah, and you're not getting naked. Yeah, so that's new. So that's new. Um, what was the first time I actually shot you in a scene? Do you remember? I don't remember uh, these things. I wish I did. I have no idea. Did I didn't do you in that dog grooming scene? Did I? No. I did a dog grooming scene at the studio Mm. once. It was really bizarre. That's funny. Were y'all actually grooming dogs? Yes. Oh, my God. Why wasn't I in that scene? I don't know. That's great. It was a girl-girl scene. And we were – it was a dog grooming scene. Obviously, the dogs, like, got out once the sex started. But um, I think my dog Bonnie was in it. And I I remember that so distinctly because, first of all, dogs were in it. I fucking love dogs. But second of all, um, I remember our old set designer, Ishmael, designed. And it was like one of the – and he was normally extremely talented. But there was something about – I think he didn't understand like what a dog grooming place is supposed to look like. Like, He was Colombian. Like he just never like – I don't think he'd ever been to a dog groomer. (laughs) It was just like not something that he understood. And it was literally like the ugliest set he ever – Ever built, and I remember my mom came in and like freaked out because she hated it so much, and it was just a disaster. I'm trying to think. I want to say it was like you shot me and Yanakova. Does that sound familiar? That sounds in a yoga familiar. scene. I think. Okay. Yeah. 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 Your mom's. Place, the, yep. Right? In the daylight studio above. I remember yeah. that. And then yeah. you had me out in your horse stable and stuff too. Yes. Okay. White horse. Yes, Spanky. That was my horse. He died. Oh, I'm very sad about it's that. Okay. I love horses. I know. They yeah, that was that. a fun. That was a fun. Yeah, yeah. Huh. it's all on Sue's net. I'm like, yeah, Sue's dot net. People, to remember, man, go check it out. Back. That was a long time ago. That yeah, was, like, 2010, nine, maybe somewhere back there. I don't know. I don't know. It's all fuzzy after a while. I know, right? But it, I can remember certain days usually based off of outfits, mm. but that's about it. Like yeah. when I see a certain outfit, I'll remember that scene or whatever that scenario but I won't remember when it was or anything like that I used to be very proud of myself on how I could remember every single set I'd ever shot who was in it what they wore what the set was like I was like Jesus. rain man That's with a that lot shit in your hard drive. but now I can't you just gotta purge it at a certain point I know Please. I mean I've done probably I mean over 5,000 shoots for sure Jesus Christ. if not more than if not significantly more than that it's a lot Probably more than that. That's crazy. Probably somewhere between five and ten thousand shoots. How many scenes do you do a month now? Oh God, it depends. Like October was the busiest month of the year for me. Um, Lisa Ann booked the shit out of me because we like finished two of her movies. 
So, I mean, this month I was shooting anywhere. I was shooting about three to four days a month, a week. Um, mostly three, but normally, honestly, it's more like two days a week. I don't know. On it, I was super busy last year, and then this year, like things just fell That's off. Good. No, things fell off. Oh, really? Like yeah, October. Like I said, October was really busy, but I lost two um, big clients, and then like there was this whole shit with my website. I had to relaunch it. Um, I didn't. I'm not going to get into it. But anyways, um, yeah, it was – I had a rough year. I really had a rough year. So um, I'm working less now than I really have been in a long time. Um, But that's okay because I started this podcast. So four days a week makes my knees hurt. Yeah, I can't do – honestly, I can't do four days a week anymore. Like I I, before it was like I wouldn't do – um, more than four, like five days was too much. Now, like four days is too much. Like three days is too much. Three days is a lot. Three days, even is if a it's lot. split up, like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, it's still a lot. Because the thing is, is that not only is it, it's not like we just show. At least for me, I don't just show up to set. Uh-uh. Like I have to prep There's for so it. We have to get props. I have to pack wardrobe. Yeah. We have to make sure everyone's scheduled in. And then I just have all this like office back end shit to do. It's a ton. Of and work. then afterwards, I have to process everything. I have to get it out to my clients. Like everybody has a different different way in which they want to receive content. So yeah. it's a lot. And I have a full-time assistant too, and it's still a fucking lot. I mean, it's crazy. Just, just on the small scale of what I do for my own stuff, yeah. it, that's a lot of work. Right. Just managing that. So yeah. I can imagine. It yeah. like, stresses what, me out thinking about it. I'm like, no. So, so well, tell work. me what, since this is, the podcast is about you and not me, um, <laughs> though I love that you're asking me questions about myself because like, Lord knows I love to talk about myself. <laughs> Um, what are you doing specifically these days? Like, I know we talked about the different platforms that you use. I think we got to Twitter and then we went off on a tangent. <laughs> I rant a lot. So that's okay. That's why Twitter's good for me. <laughs> Twitter's a great place to rant. I love it. I love it so much. All my fans get excited whenever I put rant time because they know what big ass thread is about I've, to I've seen some of your rants. <laughs> I can't help it. Sometimes my Twitter fingers get to snap it. And then afterwards I'm like, should I delete that? Fuck it. Whatever. Uh, okay. So I've got Twitter and Instagram. And then I've also got Snapchat, my premium Snapchat um, that that's, I sell. That's been doing really well for a lot of people. Yeah. Right now. Actually, it's su- doing surprisingly well. And then I cam on Cam Soda. And then I sell customs, Skype dates, uh, my OnlyFans, mm-hmm. my website, badgirljones.com. I've Are you still sh- shooting and updating that? Yeah. Wow. I'm in the process of – Redoing it? Mm-hmm. Don't it's ask. such a nightmare. Redoing I know your it is. I just it's did such it. a nightmare. It cost it is. me a fortune. I am like, it's really slow going because mm-hmm. of that very thing. Yeah. So, but it's gonna get there eventually. And I've got so many other things that are going on too that it's okay. That it's it's okay. It's it's not going anywhere, but it's gonna be better. Yeah. I'm hoping by January ish, maybe February. Yeah. I don't know. Don't always add a always add a month on whatever you think it's gonna be. It's probably gonna be like my birthday. (laughs) Um yeah. So I've got like so many things that are going on, but it's really good. It keeps me busy. I, mm-hmm. I really love it. What's the kind of content mostly that you shoot for your website? Like, do you just shoot like s- stuff on? A lot on, of solo stuff. A lot of solo stuff. They do like you like solo. shoot it yourself? Like, put a camera on a tripod? Do you have someone come in and shoot it for you? Both. Like, both? I do trade, like, because mm-hmm. obviously my stuff is going to look very pro am. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, I have all this production equipment, but I yeah. don't necessarily know what I'm doing with it. Right. So, okay. my, it. my stuff looks very pro am when I shoot it myself. But then I'll do trade with people and mm-hmm. get like actual professional. Nice quality photos and videos. That solo we did was on trade, right? Mm -hmm. The one where you got sung by the bee? Yes. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Not that one. Wait. No, that one. You paid me for that one. Okay. But we did another trade day, didn't we? Probably. Yeah, I think we did. I don't remember. Jesus. It's just. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know. But um, yeah, so I'll do things like that, you know? Yeah. And then so then I'll have like actually good quality stuff mixed in with my right. more amateur stuff. So they have a, a good mix. Do you variety. find that your fans prefer one over the other or the two different they camps? They like both, actually. Yeah. They like the variety. They like knowing that I shot some stuff, but then they also like the quality of like your stuff, you mm-hmm. know? So they, they like it mixed up. I think they just like new stuff, honestly. Mm. <laughs> so that's really yeah. what it is. Just new. Yeah. It's, Sometimes I wish I wasn't like locked into that glamour style because it's so expensive to produce. Jesus, yeah, and um, you know, like if I could just shoot like amateur content, it would cost me like so much less. But it's just not my thing and and I don't it's funny because I don't 
if I watch porn, I actually almost prefer the more amateur looking Me stuff. Too. I'm not into high production stuff. But what I shoot, it like has to be high production. Otherwise, like I, I can't like, I literally the- can't post amateur content. Like it hurts my eyes. <laughs> like I just you know what I mean? I'm such a perfectionist and I'm so locked into what I do. If there's like the lighting's wrong, I d- I can't. I just can't I like physically can't. It looks exquisite though. Thank like, you. Your stuff is beautiful. Thank you. I just wish more people would pay for it. Yeah, you're <laughs> Hey, you were telling me. <gasps> oh, God. It's so hard. Yeah. Why is it so hard? But, you know, and that's crazy. There are a lot of people still – I have to give credit to there are a lot of people that are still paying for shit. Like, yes. Like the customs. I make good money doing customs. Tell me about your customs because I always find that that's so interesting that girls like – always have these really interest you know you must get weird requests yes i get really weird requests but i make more money doing customs than i do like if i can make if i do two custom days a month that's way more than i make doing scenes like Interesting. my my checks from producers who do custom cuz i shoot my own customs but i also work for producers that also shoot customs right right and like i can work for a producer and i'll get like double my daily rate just to shoot one day of customs with them wow like versus one or two scenes for someone else, what they would pay me. Right, right, like, right. It's good money. It's really good money. It's work. Do you find that you know? there's a certain type of custom that you tend to get booked for more often? Yeah. What's that? The jack of instruction. Ah, the joys. okay. Yeah. Okay. A lot, a lot, a lot of so that. So explain to our audience who may not know exactly what that is. Jack of instruction is where a girl or girls, or well, I guess a guy can do it too. Anyone. Uh, a sex symbol, a porn star, is like talking to the camera and mm. instructing you how to jack off. It could be for – it's usually mainly for guys, mm-hmm. but I've done them for women as well, actually. Mm-hmm. I've gotten custom orders to do them for women as well. Right. So you just talk about whatever, rub your clit, take your dick out, don't come yet, blah, blah, blah. Right. Th- there's two different kinds. There's encouragement and then there's instruction. Mm. Instruction is you tell them precisely what to do, no, you wait for my command type of shit. Okay. I'll count down and then you can come on the one. So it's more like a dominance type thing. Yeah. And okay. then the encouragement, the J-O-E. Um, I actually didn't know that there was two different kinds. Yeah. There's there's encouragement and there's instruction because I actually – I got them confused one time. Someone asked for – encouragement and I gave them instruction and they were like what the fuck is this shit and I was like oh my bad I don't know <laughs> like, you don't see the E <laughs> yeah it's funny how people specific people are about their requests but you know I mean very specific but to be fair yeah. they're paying they can they Honestly, can make those requests the ones that are really specific unless they're just like completely over the top like a full 10 page script that's yeah. ridiculous yeah. but I actually prefer the ones that are more specific because then I know exactly what I'm going to do and I don't have to stop and think about it when I get in the video you right, know what right, I mean right. like they literally have it down to a T. They tell me what to wear, what color lip gloss, how my hair should be, my makeup. It's perfect. It's like brainless. <laughs> yeah. What are what are some of the strangest requests that you've gotten? Oh, Jesus. There's some really, really weird ones. Um, any of the messy ones are always very bizarre to me, mm. like covering myself in like beans Beans? Yeah, no, I actually had a guy recently tell me that he wants me to do um, a come uh, come eating instruction, which is where I instruct him to eat his own semen, right? Okay. But while I'm doing that, I have to, like, dump a can of beans on my head <laughs> and then, like, yeah, and something else, sit on a balloon and let it pop and scare me. I don't know, some weird-ass shit. Like, I was like, okay, are you going to send the beans in the balloons? Oh, my God. Because I'm not buying that. <laughs> that is so bizarre. This is weird-ass shit. Did he shit. care what kind of beans they were? Did they have to be, like, kidney beans like or beans, black beans? Baked beans. He, he baked some beans. Super super savory and like messy and like yeah i don't know jesus christ <laughs> this is weird ass shit wow and you just sit on a balloon at the same time yeah sit on the balloon dump the beans on my head and tell him to eat his cum wow all at once wow that's a, that's like multitasking Wait. i was gonna say it's like rubbing your belly <laughs> yeah. and patting your head very at the same much. time <laughs> very much i mean at least he didn't ask me to fist my ass at the same time yeah that's where it gets complicated you yeah know? you charge like, extra for that extra extra <laughs> um any other ones oh, just the most bizarre shit like one guy wanted me to um funny enough i think i was talking about this a minute ago he wanted me to take a video of me clipping my toenails uh, and then end up sending him a baggie of my clipped uh, toenails. And I'm just like, not happening because 
your ass is like doing some voodoo or something. Oh, yeah. Oh, nope. Yeah. No, I don't want to know what you're doing with those toenails. They're staying as my property, though. That is so bizarre. I'll make the video, but I'm not sending you my actual DNA. Oh, my God. That is so weird. Yeah. Some guys are very strange. Some girls are strange, too, though. I have some really, really weird ones from girls. They're not so much, like, sexually bizarre, mm-hmm. but it's just weird that that's what they'd ask me for. Like, one person, one, one lady asked me if I would... Take a video of me putting my cat on my head and just walking around with my cat on my head. <laughs> like, what? I guess. How much are you going to pay me for that? What if she claws me and I have to take off work? You're paying for that, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know? like, wow. Just weird shit. Like, okay. but Wow. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to, like, kink shame people. You know, whatever you're into is cool. But it, I've always been interested in, like, what makes that sexual for someone. Like, that guy with the beans – Something must have happened to him, like an adolescence or something like that, or like he was being bullied and someone like dumped a can of beans on him or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. And for some reason he connected it to something sexual or some sort of like taboo in him. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Because, I mean, I don't know. I'd like to think of myself as being very out there sexually. Mm. But some of these requests I get make me feel very vanilla. I'm like, (laughs) what? Now that's kind of odd, but. I don't know. Maybe I'll be into it. I should try it. So how are you out there sexually? Like, are you into fetish stuff? Are you into, like, bondage? Yeah. or Just about everything, really. <laughs> everything? No, I mean, not everything, I guess. But most everything I'm willing to try. We'll yeah. That way. Like, yeah. I'm just very curious, I guess. I don't have, like, one thing that does it for me, I guess, mm-hmm. other than possibly just lots of sex. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But other than that, I just, um, I like to mix it up a lot. Mm. Get bored with one thing. Yeah, I get really yeah. bored. So on to the next thing. Just step it up a little bit. Yeah, I hear you. I was in a relationship with a dom for about a year, and we really explored a lot of like bondage and spanking and and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know. I almost feel like I like got my. I I almost feel like I wore it out. Totally. Like I'm kind of not into that the way I used to be anymore. I also don't know if it's just because I'm older and I'm, like, more boring now. That's what I've been feeling lately because I've just been like... My sex drive isn't what it was. It's like, it'll be there sometimes. And when it's there, it's really on. But then a lot of times it's just like, nah. uh, Yeah. I'm not feeling that. I want to get up in the morning. Yeah. So I'm going to bed now. Yes. (laughs) Take it or leave it. (laughs) Do you go to bed early? Yes. I I go to bed so fucking early I go to bed too. Yeah, Yeah. like hella early. I go to bed like 9 o'clock. Yep. (laughs) I will too sometimes. 9, 10... And then, like, I can't sleep in past, like, 7.30. Yes. And, but the, it's, like, I actually enjoy that, though. Yeah. Because growing up, mornings were fucking hell for me. Mm-hmm. All the way until at least, like, 26, 27. Yeah. I was not a morning person. No. Same. So now that I can actually wake up in the morning and enjoy it, I'm like, fuck, yeah, this is great. I, like I know. It. It's nice to, like, feel like you've gotten a lot of things accomplished by, like, noon. Yes. That's my thing. To yeah. feel like, okay, everything, the house is fucking perfect. Got all my chores done. Yeah. Uh, balance my checkbook. Yeah. Now I can do whatever. You got the rest of the day. Yeah, fuck go. yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm the same. I used to hate mornings too. I remember my mom used to come in. We she used to I was such an asshole. Like in high school, I was the worst at waking up in the morning. My mom used to come in and wake me up and she had all these different tricks that she would do. First of all, she would always say wakey wakey, which oh, no. to this day makes my skin crawl. <laughs> yeah. It is so annoying. And it especially works. when you're like in high school and you hate life. Your and you were up all night. Oh, it's thing the worst. Ever. First thing in the morning, wakey, wakey. And then she would like pull the covers off and then I'd pull them down. And then she'd take water and she'd like sprinkle oh, it on no. me. Or like, oh, I no. mean, she just had so many like different methods to try to get me out of bed. I mean, honestly, poor woman because like I was such a, I used to throw shit at her. Oh, no, yeah. Like I was horrible. I was a demon. I was I, definitely a demon. I feel like I would just be like, if I had a kid, I'd be like, fine, fucking miss and flunk out of school. See what happens in your life. Fine, sleep sleep through your life. Because you've only got five years left in this house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> you better get to step in. But it's funny as you get older, like the things that like are exciting and um, I don't know that like for me now, like a great Sunday is – like going to the farmer's market, getting up early, going to the gym, right. going, getting like breakfast with my man, like going to the farmer's market, like all these little domestic things that I used to think were so boring. I just started cooking 
Really? Like for the first time in my life, right? I, I turned 30 in April and just in the past like month, I honestly have never cooked before. Like wow. I couldn't tell you even what to do. Like right. ramen, but right, 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 right. Like only the kind that I can put in the microwave. Right. So <laughs> yeah. So I started cooking recently and Going to the grocery store, let me tell you what, it was like a whole new experience. The first like two times I went, I was so overwhelmed. Yeah, there's Holly, a lot I of was, choices. I spent like three hours in there just like scared shitless, like on the, on just the seasoning aisle. Like what the fuck am I doing And in what here? grocery store did you go to? Ralph's. Okay. Because I was going to say like sometimes when I go to like Whole Foods. Oh, yeah. I'm no, like, I haven't. Whole Foods I don't is know bad enough as do. it is. Whole Foods is bad enough when you're not cooking. Yeah. So I'm definitely not there yet. Yeah. But working up there. But I go to Trader Joe's and that's. Yeah, Trader Joe's is a little more pared down. Ver- yeah, yeah, they don't have as much stuff to it's, pick from. Yeah, it's much easier to handle. But yeah. like even just the regular grocery store, I was just so lost. I was like, what the fuck am I doing in here? So I went back out and sat in the car for a few <laughs> minutes and gathered my thoughts, called all of my family. And the only one that answered was my nephew, mind you. <laughs> my 12-year-old nephew was the only one that answered and told me what to do in the grocery store. I'm not kidding you. He's great. Wow. He cooks. Like, he's a southern boy, so he really cooks. Oh, wow. He can, like, make his own hollandaise sauce and poach eggs and shit. Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, That's incredible. Like, I, don't even, I don't even know how to, like, cook chicken. And so, this kid can fucking do anything. So, so Okay, like, oh, yeah. so now you're cooking. What have you made? Very basic stuff. I did, like, um, salmon with zucchini and... Brussels sprouts. Okay. And then Sam, asparagus, good for you. asparagus, rice, chicken. I don't know. Just really basic. Oh, I made a pot roast the other day. <gasps> yeah. And it was really cool because a pot roast usually takes fucking forever. Mm. But I made it in a pressure cooker. Yeah. It literally only took an hour and it was so good. Yep. I use like all fresh herbs too, rosemary yeah. and thyme and stuff. I was so proud of myself, Ollie. That's amazing. I fucked up one thing. I didn't cut the potatoes. I had the little baby red potatoes and I didn't cut them in half. Yeah. But other than that, it was fucking perfect. You know what's a great um, – my mom actually used to be a horrible cook, horrible, horrible cook. And um, my sister bought her – for Christmas one year, she bought her the Barefoot Contessa cookbook. And okay. after that, my mom got really into cooking and bought a lot more cookbooks. Now my mom's actually a great cook. But the Barefoot Contessa, she's a whole bunch of different books. Yeah. They're all v- pretty simple recipes, yeah. but they're all really good. I just got the uh- – the first one, there's two, uh, Chrissy Teigen's Cravings. Okay. I got the first one, and they're simple recipes. Yeah. It's really good. That's the so. thing. You got to go for, like, the books with the more – because there are some that are, like, really complex. Like, I feel like cookbooks used to be, like, so so complex, so much work that, like, you never even wanted to attempt no, to tackle okay. them. But now, like, people are really coming out with much easier recipes, um, much simpler stuff, less ingredients, yeah. that kind of stuff. If it's got, if I look at it and it's got more than like 10, 15 ingredients, mm-hmm. I'm like, nah, fuck that. Mm-mm. Have you ever thought about trying Blue Apron? Yes, actually. I was looking, there's like a couple of different ones now. Mm-hmm. Blue Apron, I think, was the first, but there's yep. a couple of different ones there's now. Different Have ones you tried now. them? I've yes, heard. I really liked Blue Apron. I don't do it anymore right now just because I just don't have the time. Totally. And honestly, like my boyfriend does all the cooking. My oh, boyfriend's yeah. an excellent cook. Fuck yeah. Which is great. So like yeah. he literally makes me dinner every night. It's really nice. Um, but I, awesome. when I used it, I really did like it because the recipes weren't too complicated and they send you everything send that you, you everything, need. Right? And it's great too because, you know, they'll pick recipes with these kind of exotic ingredients that like are difficult for you to find. You'd have to go to like some Japanese supermarket market totally. to get it. And then you'd have to buy a huge bag of it and you'd only use like a tiny amount and then it would sit in your spice cabinet for fucking five years and like so calcify like, before you throw it away. It gives you the exact amount that you awesome. need. So it's like you don't even necessarily really have to measure stuff that's out. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, I need to try that. I would highly recommend it. I need to try that because I've, re- I've been really into it lately. So. I think your fans who are listening should buy it for you. Hint, hint. Um, for Christmas. I don't know if that means that they have to have your address. Well, my fan mail address, so. Okay. But yeah. I don't know if the thing is they deliver food, so they're going to take it to your oh. post box. Huh. Okay. How about this? Send her money so she can subscribe to it herself. Well, a couple of my fans know my address. So. Okay. Well, then there you go. A couple of them, they've been with me through everything, through sick and fun. Yeah. So. I mean, that's the thing. Like, some people think that, like, porn fans are all weird and creepy and gross, but that's not true. Some like, of my, pa- my some fans of are my them, best friends. Yeah. Seriously. Some I talk of them, to them are all the time. really lovely people and yeah. they just want to support you because they watch porn like fucking everybody else on this planet, but they're not ashamed to admit it and they're not ashamed to support support the girls that they like and they believe that they should contribute to their career. 
And they see us as humans, you know yes. what I mean? At the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. We are porn stars, but we're also humans at the yes. end of the day. So yeah. seriously, like, I have two in specific fans of mine that are like they've been my best friends for the past ten years. I talk to them all the time. They have my real phone number. They text me all kinds of shit. Like, I mean, you know, they're respectful, but mm-hmm. I talk to them all the time. Like, yeah, I mean Danny Daniels, uh, she had a girl that started off as her fan that became a friend and she was a bridesmaid at her wedding. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, you never know. Yeah. Don't get too hopeful, guys. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. (sighs) There's some people that just like, yeah, I had like, actually, I don't even want to say, because if I mention him, then he'll, it'll, he'll, it's going to trigger it. Yeah. I'll give him attention. I know exactly what you mean. That I I don't want to give him because I've been ignoring a lot of things. I've been trying to, to I was trying to explain this exact concept to someone the other day. They were like, just tell them to go away. And I'm like, you don't understand. That doesn't work. That's just adding fuel to the flame. That's all it's doing. It's fanning it. Like, nah, you just have to act like they don't exist and get them to go away little by little that way. But the minute you stoke that fire. Yeah. Right back at it. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. It's funny. I I, I kind of learned that early on in my career because, like, when I first started, I was so desperate for the idea of, like, a fan. Like, oh, my God. You know what I mean? And being a producer and someone who works behind the camera, I wasn't necessarily getting – accruing, like, a big fan base, you know, that, like, somebody in front of the camera would because um, people don't really ever look at the photographer or the director or, you know, they don't see my face so much, blah, blah, blah. So when I first got my, my first, like, fan, I was really excited. And they would write to me, and I would write them back, and, you know, we would have this conversation. And I had these two guys that got very weird on me. One of them um, found out I had a boyfriend. I think I mentioned it in an email. This is before social media, by the way. Um, and he basically went ape shit on me and he was like, I can't believe that you're dating somebody. I thought we were like gonna, meant for each other. Like this guy lived in Australia. Like, of course we'd never met. And he was like, I can't believe you would betray me like that. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, dude, Traitor. I don't even know who you like at all. Like I thought we were, and I feel like. I didn't think that any of our correspondence was ever on that kind of deep level. I didn't no. feel any sexual tension there. I didn't feel like there was anything super intimate in our correspondence, but for, like, apparently he did. And then there was this other guy who, um, uh, same thing, he got a little too attached. And then um, one day he told me that I'm only laughing because this isn't true. He told me that he was dying of a rare disease. And his last uh, dream in life would be to meet me, like like a Make a Wish Foundation kind of shit, right? So I was like, uh, Can you "Imagine if we had one of those for I know, right? For meet, adult meet your favorite porn star before you die." <laughs> We had our own like version of Make a Wish. Oh, oh my God, that was so good. So, but yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, he wasn't fucking dying, and I'll tell you why. Be- well, so anyway, so and I'm like, well, what do you, what, what is it? Like, do you have cancer? He was like, oh, it's a rare disease, and the doctors can't figure it out. I'm like, okay, fucking bullshit. Yeah. Right. So then time. he was like, okay, I want to come out and visit you. Can I come stay with you? And I was <sighs> like, absolutely, sure, not. buddy. Yeah. I'm like, I look, come on and, in. and you know, again, this is at the very early stages. I, I still like was excited about the idea of having a fan. I didn't want to, like, hurt this guy's feel. I didn't understand about establishing boundaries. Totally. Um, and I was like, look, uh, and I, like, didn't know how to say Because today I'd be like, go fuck yourself, dude. <laughs> but back then I was like, oh, I don't want to be mean. Like, he's been so, like, nice, and he's, like, the only fan that I have. And I don't want to lose my a fan. And and so I was like, look, you know, um, I don't want to be mean. I'm sure you're a wonderful guy, but I can't have you stay at my house. Like, I don't know you. I live alone. Like, yeah. you know, it's just not a good thing. Um, maybe you can, like, get a hotel room and maybe we can have lunch or something. I was like, I'll, like, go out, meet him somewhere for yeah, lunch, I'm right? Like- yeah. And um, and he got very upset and he was like, I don't understand what kind of person you think I am, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so he just went like ape shit. So I was like, okay, dude, I'd, like I cut off communication with him. So um, <clears throat> whatever, I don't hear from him for a little bit. And this is when we had the studio off Sepulveda and we had a landline with an answering oh my machine. God. <laughs> And we never, and still to this day, like I almost never shoot on weekends. I really try to leave them open. So I, we get into the studio on like a Monday or a Tuesday and I check the messages and there are several from him. And he's like, hey. Several. I'm outside your studio. 
What? Yep. He found the studio. Because, like, it wasn't that hard. Like, if oh, you looked up, like, Suzy Randall photography, like, God. I think you could, wasn't yeah, too hard to find the still. studio. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't cool. And he's like, oh. I'm outside the studio. I can't wait to meet you. Um, I knocked and nobody answered. So I figured I'll just wait here until, like, someone arrives. And I was like, and then the next message was, hey, I've been here for a while. I haven't seen anybody. Uh, hope you guys are coming in. Um, can't wait to meet you. And like, obviously, nobody ever showed up. And so he ended up having to fly home. And I was just wow. like, holy shit. Like, that scared me. Yeah, that's scary. Yeah. And then um, and then he emailed me and he was like, I went to your studio. And I was like, yeah, you can't do that. That's not okay. And then he like freaked out, was like, I'm dying. I hope you know that like I'm going to go to my grave miserable because you couldn't grant me this one wish, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm sorry you're dying. Like, have a nice death. <laughs> See you later. And then like six months later, I get an email from him. Hey, how you doing? Just wanted to say hi. I haven't talked to you in a while. I'm like, I thought you were dead. <laughs> What happened to your dull dying thing? And then I never heard from him again. But yeah, that was before I realized that you have to establish boundaries with some people because uh, some people are just not not healthy and um, they are lonely. And, uh, you know, I mean, I remember when I was drinking a lot, I wrote Ryan Seacrest an email. This is before uh, he became like super. Oh my God, this is so good. This is before he became super famous. I think he like hosted the soup for like. A couple episodes, and I just thought he was so great. And I don't remember how I got his info, oh, but I, I like love to read that sent him an email oh or God. something. <laughs> and I was like, "Hi, I really like want to get to know you." And like, and I was like upset that he didn't get back to me. <laughs> Ollie, that's so good though. It's so good. Ryan Seacrest of all people, like you know who uh, today, like I could care less about this guy. Like I don't know what I was thinking. It's so good. This is very weird. I also um sort of st- <laughs> this is so embarrassing. I don't know why we're getting off on this tangent, <laughs> but I sort of stalked this uh professor who was on a lot of like historical um documentaries about like the medieval times because I'm like into professors. So you were like e stalking him. Yeah, so I saw him. He he was like, you know, when you watch like those documentaries about like um, history, and you have certain experts that come on and they yeah. talk about it. And he was a professor, and he was kind of young, and he was sort of cute. And I oh, was like, oh, and I was drink. Like I said, I was drinking a lot at this time, and I was like, this guy's kind of cute. I'm gonna like hit him up. So I found his information, <laughs> yes. and I emailed him, and I was like, hey, I'm a big fan. Did he respond? No. Oh, yes, he did. Yes. He did. Because yes. I told him who I was. I told him what I did. And he was, like, very excited that, oh, like, someone oh, yeah. who worked in porn. Because I think, like, you know, the fan. Because I even said to him, I'm like, you probably get, like, some fangirls that write to you. And I'm, I'm sorry. I'm embarrassed. And he does. But he was like, yeah, none of them are like you. And then we, like, started flirting and stuff. And then I was like, okay, this is ridiculous. Ridiculous! Like, and then I just stopped. Well, you have to imagine his world is completely different. Yeah, like the exact. Yeah, but opposite I was like straight those. up like fan stalking some like medieval like expert professor guy. Have you ever done anything like that? Oh, I'm sure I have. You're like no, Holly. I haven't. Uh, just you. Well, there's this <laughs> one artist who I harass on Twitter nonstop, and it's been going on for years now. Really? Yeah. She like actually, I think when I first started harassing her, she only had like. Like 30,000 followers or something mm-hmm. like that. So I was like, oh, fuck yeah, it's a shoe in I got yeah. way more than her. But now yeah, she's yeah. got like a million or something. Who is it? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Grimes? Mm. I don't know if you know that is. Mm-mm. She's like a pop artist. Okay. Like, Did she dancing. respond to you? No, she never responds. <laughs> she likes my tweets every once in a while because I just stay, say stupid shit to her. Yeah. Like, okay, so she's <sighs> super like, I don't know, whatever, vegan, eco-friendly, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. I don't know what her label for it is. Anyways. Mm-hmm. One day she posted something about not eating eggs. And I was like, God damn it. I've been rooting for you to be Team Lesbo this whole time. She was like, what? What the fuck? <laughs> just weird ass shit. I'm just constantly trolling her. Just so so you understand her, her need to establish boundaries this with you. This has been going on for a good five years. And it's probably never going to stop. Grimes, I love you. <laughs> I'm obsessed with her. So, see, people, even we can be weird fangirls I'm a total and fangirl. totally harass other people. Hell yeah. That's so funny. Drop the album, sis. Do it. <laughs> I love her. So, you have been only a girl girl performer for the last 12 years. Yep. How has that been for you? Have you ever felt pressure to do boy girl? Because by this time, almost, you're one of the few girls I know. Because they're like, 
there was like a bunch of girl girl performers like kind of around your time that yeah. were pretty successful and it used to be like you used to be able to make a living as a girl girl performer only easily easily and Even then just solo yeah yeah my whole first year i didn't do any i didn't think i did any video yeah okay no i think i started doing solo video towards the end of my first year right but right. before that, it was just pictures, magazine stuff. Yeah. I could make a whole living just doing that. I know. It's crazy because girls will sometimes write to me. They're like, hey, I'm interested in getting into the porn industry, but I only want to shoot solos. I'm like, nope. There's Good like no luck. work. I'm so sorry, but there's literally no work for Good you. Good luck. Yeah. Like I, I can't. Like maybe you can cam, you know, and yeah. like do that thing, produce your own content, but I have nobody to shoot you for. Yeah. Like even the Twisties Treats girls, like they do they, girl yeah. girl or boy girl. Yeah, like it's part of the package. Nowadays, I can't even tell you the last solo day I was booked for. Yeah. It's always like combined. You do yes. some solo and then girl girl or something like that. You yes. Know what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. I can't – I honestly can't even tell you that my last – Solo day, other yeah. than like customs, right, 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 right. You know what I mean? But yeah, that's... but like professional, like yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, how have you managed to just hold on to the girl, girl only? Very carefully. Yeah, it's been hard. It's actually been really hard because, well, like for instance, I'm I've always been very open about being bi. Mm-hmm. I'm not a lesbian. Mm-hmm. I like cock too. Mm-hmm. Sorry if that offends some of you, but <laughs> and I know it does because I've yeah. kind of gotten to the point now where I just don't give a fuck. Yeah. I used to try to like dance around it a little bit just to be nice. Mm-hmm. But in my my old age, I'm just like, you know what? Fucking embrace that shit. Yeah. yeah. Get over it. I've never once said that I'm straight gay. Mm-hmm. Never. I've always held to it that I'm extremely bi girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been difficult with that because there's been a lot of like, for instance, there's a lot of roles that I've wanted t- to be able to play mm-hmm. um, or to be in certain scenes um, just to have a creative release to be able to act those out. And mm-hmm. it requires a girl that does boy girl. Mm-hmm. So that's been probably the hardest part for me. Yeah. There were really big roles that I've always wanted, but it requires called for someone who did boy girl yeah. so it was very difficult for me that and also the money i was gonna say the people money. probably offered you quite a bit of money to do your i've first been boy girl offered scene. a lot of money a yeah. lot of money just for one scene and so that's also very difficult because i like money yeah i really like money yeah, i do too <laughs> so that's been very hard as well but um you know when, when it comes down to it um, a big part of me really just does it for my fans, the ones that have been with me for so long, mm-hmm. because not many girls hold out and only do girl girl their career. Mm-hmm. So it makes it, I don't know, it's stupid, but it makes it special for them for mm-hmm. whatever reason. Mm-hmm. N- nothing that I necessarily agree with, but because they've been with me for so long, they've supported me for so long, that's kind of like something special I do for them, I guess. Right. Held out so you so feel long. a loyalty towards your fans. Oh, 100%. That's interesting. Some of my fans have been with me through thick and thin. Yeah. Like they have they've brought me out of like depression holes that I've been in before like single handedly my fans did that I, you know what I mean incredible that you can have that kind of connection with these people I think we're actually starting to answer the reason why you have such a cultish fan base I love I my fans I think this is starting to unravel in this conversation I'm just as much their fan as they are mine like I love these people yeah. if I see uh, okay, for instance, in particular, recently there was a new person in the Team GJ fan group, mm-hmm. right? And they were cool. I liked them. But then they started picking on one of the people that's been, like, one of my number one fans for so long. Mm-hmm. And I instantly put a stop to that. I was like, oh, hell no. Not, not about it to happen on my watch. Yeah. I do have favorites. <laughs> yeah. They have seniority. They've been with me for over a decade now, and you're not going to say that to that person. Mm-hmm. So either be nice, play nice, mm-hmm. like adults, or get to step in. That's yeah. So. I set those bound those hard line boundaries, right? Mm. I really love my fans. So that's amazing. I think that's a big part of it. It's a give and take. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then um, I don't know, is there a part of you do you think you'll ever do boy girl? Or do you think there's just a part of you that's just like fuck because when you do it, it's done. Yeah. Like it's out there and you can't take it back. Honestly. And you can't reverse that decision. Um uh if if and when I've I'd been dancing with the idea of doing it for my site. Mm. Just for my website. Um mm. or even just customs, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Because I have uh, a person that I would perform with, I guess. Yeah. My my significant other. Uh-huh. But it would be, I don't know, it would be really expensive, I think, if someone wanted to see that. Mm-hmm. It would be. I remember when Jelena Jensen did her first Boy Girl, um, she did it live. On her so, site? Yeah, so that people couldn't steal it. 
Uh, that's great. Which was pretty smart. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. So. Well, but there's a way of re- sort of recording live now. Yeah. That was back when it was a little harder, that's, I think. That's true. That's true. But it's still di- – yeah, and she recognized that obviously that was the case. But uh, it definitely made it all that more difficult to steal it. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And people would have to like – sign up for that moment at that time since it was live yeah. so she got like a big jump yeah of people yeah the, i mean it's definitely an idea that i've played with mm-hmm. just at least for in like the customs world you know what mm. i mean it should be so easy to do that yeah but you're not sure <laughs> eh, so it's not it, like it's not a definite no it's just a you don't know it honestly right now it's a no the hardest part would just be to see my fans mourn it that mm. would be the hardest part for me yeah. which I, I'm, I don't know if you've seen or not. I'm always very angry when people do that to the girl-girl performers that transition. Like mm. when girl-girl performers, even if they've only been girl-girl only for a year or two, if they transition to boy-girl, they get so much hate on social mm-hmm. media. And it makes me flip the fuck out every time. Yeah. I'm like, fuck you. It's her body. Do what she wants. And I think a big part of that is, too, because I've always been playing with the idea. Mm. So I know that's going to happen to me. Right. Probably even on a bigger scale because I've been girl-girl for so long. Yeah. You know? And so that that fucks with me, knowing that I'm going to have to deal with that. But don't you think, like, your true fans would support you and no matter what you do? Yes and no. Because I've I've definitely lost fans that were supposed to be like my – like people who literally had their walls plastered with me. Mm-hmm. And then all I did was post a picture of like me and like my brother and they thought it was a boyfriend at the time. So they flipped out and like the next thing I know, all of my uh, memorabilia that they had made of me, books and po- posters and everything else is all on fucking eBay. They're like, fuck you. And I'm like, that's my brother. The wow. fuck? Wow. Wow. Literally just a picture. Oh, at uh, one time it was I got I got a bunch of angry emails because I posted a picture on Instagram that literally just had a guy's leg draped over my lap. Wow. I couldn't even see him. You could just see that it was a hairy leg. I was going to say, well, how do they know it isn't your uh, like dikey friend who doesn't like to shave? <laughs> she just has a really bad pedicure. Yeah, I mean, you don't know. I, like literally it could have been a mannequin leg for all they know. Yeah. Like, but they just flipped out. Like I had all these mean, angry, drunk yeah. emails and stuff. And so interesting the way that people think they kind of own you and your decisions. Yes, it's very much how like you were talking about the guy was saying how how dare you betray me whenever he found out you had a boyfriend. Yeah. It's very much that. It's like yeah. these people from all over the world, and they're sending me these hate emails, and I'm like, I've exchanged tweets with you a couple of times. Like yeah. what? Are yeah. you talking about? Like, yeah. am I just not supposed to have happiness? Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you very much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's kind of nuts. I think I cared more when I was younger. And right. Really got into the point where I just don't give a shit anymore. It's like, pff, it's your life. Love the bad girl or get the fuck out. Yeah. I, I post pictures now of like people I'm in a relationship with. And this mm-hmm. was this was a big step for me. Yeah. It was a, it was a really big step for me. Yeah. Because uh, just for so long, I'd received so much hate for it. And yeah. now I, I'm still getting hate. I just. It rolls off easier because yeah. I've just got experience dealing with it. I've got such thick skin now. So right. it's liberating to be able to do that too. Yeah. You want to be able to like share the aspects of your life you want to be able to share. Exactly. Yeah. People can't dictate to you like how you're going to live your life. Exactly. They like, think they can. Yeah. And I think also because I went along with that for so long – that it kind of made them feel like they could do that. I don't know. Yeah, I hear you. So now it's like I'm backtracking and I'm having to like – I know this mm. sounds silly, but like retrain them yeah. <laughs> to think a different way. Yeah. Like you can love me either way. It's yeah. cool. You know? Break free. You can still jack off to me. It's cool. It's totally <laughs> cool. In fact, please do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Pay for it while you're at it. That's great. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, you know, it's – what are you going to do? Yeah, exactly. A lot of them will um, – if I just don't respond, they'll send me another email back like a week or two later and apologize. But That's good. At, ugh, some of them, they're just gone forever and I guess good riddance, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> New fans shall replace them. They probably weren't paying for anything anyway. Exactly. I was talking to Leah Love about this, about how, like how the people – who want to micromanage your career the most or like tell you how you should do things are generally people who are like not paying members of your mm-hmm. website. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So it's just like, exactly. No, you don't get to say that. Stupid. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, Georgia, thank you so much for coming on. Thank it you, It was Holly. so lovely to have you. Oh, yeah. I have some more fan questions for you, which I'm going to ask you in our 
exclusive uh, video podcast for Patreon. So if you guys are a member of patreon.com slash Unfiltered, you can go there to see that. But for the rest of you uh, listening here on your audio podcast platforms, Georgia, can you tell them where they can find you online? Go plug all your pluggables. Oh, my, my shit. Y'all yeah. buy my shit. Um, I, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at XO Georgia Jones. I'm on Snapchat, but you have to email me in order to get that. It's not free. Bookbaggirl at Gmail. Um, I'm also on camsoda.com slash Georgia Jones. Um, Sex Panther as well. Uh, I don't know. My website, duh, badgirljones.com. Yeah. I've got so much shit. Like my, my business card is a fucking. I know it's, it's crazy how many different uh, platforms and streams of revenue we have to all have in order. To I survive. have to. That's the thing. I have to have all of these hustles. But yeah. it's good. I really still enjoy it. I really do. It's yeah. nice to be able to do it all from home too. It's mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. That's really fun. Yeah. To not drive anywhere in yeah, LA traffic. In LA. I was just gonna yes. say in LA traffic. <laughs> LA traffic. It's so fucking bad. So on mornings when I get to just stay home, it's like. <laughs> Yeah. No brainer. This yeah. is easy. Of course. Psh. It's crazy. And you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Twitter and Instagram. And then, like I just said, uh, join my Patreon, hollyrandall.com slash uh, Holly Randall. No, fuck, dude. That's my website. Actually, join my website, hollyrandall.com. Do that. Do that because that's where I post all my professional uh, videos and pictures that I take. And then I actually started a new Patreon called patreon.com slash hollyrandallart where I'm actually producing only um, softcore uh, erotic art nude stuff. So it's not oh, yeah. porn. It's very artistic. Oh, yeah. And I'm hoping that I can get some support behind that because I kind of miss the days of shooting that kind of stuff. I'm, so I, I love shooting porn. It's great. But um, I'd love to be able to shoot some erotic art as well. I'm actually trying to fund a book. I was going to say, you. I don't know why you haven't done a book yet. I, I have actually four books out by Goliath Publishing. Okay. But they picked all the pictures. Okay. I didn't pick any of them. You didn't have creative direction? Or no. Whatever. <laughs> absolutely none. They wouldn't let me put like is black Goliath, and white in Goliath there. Goliath is a good – a uh, good publishing yeah, company. Yeah, they are a good publishing company. And, you know, I'm I'm very happy to have published with them. I'm very honored that they would put out my books. But I do want to do one that is um, all my own and is completely creatively directed oh, yeah. by me. And I'd love to shoot stuff specifically for that. Totally. Um, less, a little less commercial type porn, like which is what I shoot right now. So I'd really like to be able to focus specifically on erotic art and kind of come into the project with a different mindset, you know, and a, a different vision. So... Patreon.com slash Holly Randall Art to support that. Patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered to support this podcast and to watch the next set of questions that I'm going to ask Georgia for the fan section. Thank you guys so much for listening. We will see you next week.